Now, before we get to that Low Life Scum Award, let me give an earnest push to anyone in the San Francisco area to get up bright and early this coming Tuesday, October 6th, to support the fight against one dollar, one vote. A coalition of organizations will be holding a rally at the California Supreme Courthouse as the court decides on whether the people of California are allowed to call for an end to systemic corruption. Yeah, that's a real court case. So get out there and raise a fist and your voice, bright and early, for we, the people. For more information on action specifics and details on the case and Prop 49, check out moneyoutvotersin.org. Now, moving on, if you recall from episode 27, one of the events I mentioned for Activist Autumn was the Beyond Extreme Energy Fast outside of FERC, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. Well, this past Friday, activists broke the fast with a public event and rally including singing, literal bread breaking, and speeches from activists, fasters, and affected community members. This inspiring and at times emotional event was peppered with stories of people living in fracked communities and activists who refuse to step down, even when they are in fact 35 pounds down from an already lithe frame. Like Jimmy Betts, who fasted for the whole 18 days and said he said as he stood smiling in front of a crowd of supporters and media, none of these projects are done until the industry is done. Or Tim Spees, who traveled from a fracked community in Pennsylvania and is taking the culture of his community, namely quilt making, and turning it into a powerful and creative display of people over profit, one quilt square at a time. He also noted that these squares are bringing together people's stories, creating a larger whole to show the catastrophic effects of fracking on our lives. Or Pramila Malik, also from a fracked community in New York, who said, water and air is what we need, not gas. Which <laughs> is, of course, common sense, but when your mind is poisoned by dollars, <laughs> not a lot of sense gets in. So as I mentioned in episode 27, FERC has all but ignored protesters and has continued to rubber stamp for oil and gas industry projects in spite of the blatant risks to both people and planet. As Dr. Margaret Flowers said in her closing speech, imagine if FERC worked for the people and not the corporations. You'd see an immediate switch to renewable energy. But FERC doesn't work for the people. It, work for, it works for big corporations. You know, like the rest of our government. Activists know this, and they know it's going to be hard to overcome these corporate hurdles. But the resolve of these activists and community members is both inspiring and contagious. If it takes a fast, fine. If it takes blocking a pipeline, that's fine too. Until then, FERC, minus any employees who came out in support of the fasters as they occupied the space, of which there were some, minus those people, FERC, you so easily earn this week's Low Life Scum Award. You low-life scum. To learn more about the fight against FERC and BXE's mission and upcoming events, check out beyondextremeenergy.org. And to give you a glimpse of the awesomeness from the literal break, break fast last Friday, check out this slideshow and get inspired.
again, as I said, there were some employees who, despite FERC's demand that they stay away from the evil protesters, struck up conversations with the fasters, offered help, supplies, and asked to hear their stories. Events like these, little moments, they matter. One person, see, one person at a time, one domino falling as we continue to fight, like the Planned Parenthood domino that fell last week with the Senate rejecting the ludicrous idea that the government defund parent, defund Planned Parenthood, despite the fact that a whopping 3% of the services are abortions. The rest, oh, you know, cancer screenings, pap smears, STD treatment and prevention, birth control, you know, a woman's right to health. Or how about the move of regulators to reject a giant energy company takeover in the D.C. area that would have created a barrier for renewable energy and essentially a power monopoly on the East Coast? I like your style, but keep it down. In both of these cases, the scales tipped because of activists. And in both of these cases, continued pressure is mandatory. 